They are amazing. That's a big spur dog. Oh no, and I'm in the double hookup. <laughs> that was definitely worth coming for today. <laughs> what an absolute dancer. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm in my boat, Molly Moo, and I'm fishing four rods, running ledgers, and I'm just to the west of the Nab Tower in what is dredged ground. Dredged ground, which has, as the name suggests, large ships have come in, vacuum dredged the area for, you know, like the gravel and the, and the sand and stuff, um, and then just left a rough patch, but a deep rough patch. So I have just caught a strap, Strap conger, three pound, four pound, if that. Um, not what I'm here for. There's a possibility of bull huss, so I've got wire traces. Let's have a quick look. It's not every day we use wire traces. Um, these are traces that I made up for another session for taupe, but would do perfectly for um, for here. And it's got a six o hook, about a foot and a half of wire trace, quite flexible, multi strand. Um, and then I'll just be clipping onto that. So that's what we're fishing. We're fishing squid and mackerel baits and already I've got the attention of the eels. I might have to fish through the eels and as we get towards the slackered low, I might have to fish through the doggies as well. How long am I fishing for? Any time that's relevant really. I've told Mrs Williams that I'll be back by midnight. Always good to give a, a time of return because if you go past that and you haven't text, then they can they can raise the authorities and you know and let people know that you're you're missing. Um, so I've given Mrs. W a time of, of midnight tonight that I'll be home and I'll be texting her as I pull the anchor and I set off. Um, how long does that leave us? So we've got about two hours till low water, and I'd like to fish at least two hours of the flood on the turn of low. Not gonna fish it all. Very, very big tides. Um, today, one of the biggest tides of the year. Excuse me if I'm squinting, but the sun is really bright. We're gonna have fun and games with camera angles today because I can't put the camera on the rods because the rods are facing into the sun. Um, but yeah, so there's life down there. Just a matter of whether it's whether there's something else down there, something a bit more interesting. Didn't really want to put a four pound strap heel on camera. Very calm, clear day. It's a little bit of heat haze mist now. It's about 20 degrees during the day and it's October. Absolutely bonkers. We didn't have a summer. And then the autumn's trying to trick us into thinking it's a summer. So yeah, what am I hoping for here? Well, Rocket Ron gave me this mark. And Rocket Ron yesterday had some really nice bull huss out of it. So I've got mackerel baits. I think mackerel's their favourite. You've got to use a wire trace because they're toothy critters. They've got some mega mental teeth on them. Um, a bull huss would be nice. You know I love a ray. And anything else would be appreciated. I just saw a rattle on this rod. But it's got a two pound weight on it. And it's quite a heavy rod to be honest. Oh, yeah, there's something on that. Yep, yeah, there is something on that. Oh, what have we got? Not one of the other rods to go. <laughs> I'm sorry about the camera angles. As you can see, with the light the way it is, it's a, it's a weird night for filming, actually. It's a beautiful evening, the sea's still. I'm a little bit worried that the sea mist might build up a little bit. I don't want to get fogged out, because I'm only a little boat and I haven't got radar. So I'm gonna have to keep a close eye on it. But um, yeah, not much fight in this. Uh, this might be another small eel, to be honest. No head wax, no thumps, nothing swimming. It's certainly not fighting back. 
but this current is absolutely ripping through. It's got a two pound weight on the end of this, which is a, a fair old chunk of lead. I think the lead's doing more fighting than, than the fish, but can't complain. Fish is a fish. Reports coming in from the Solent today, absolutely shocking. People getting weeded out and um, pretty much nothing. I don't think there's hardly anything for a catch report coming out of the Solent for today. Let's have a look, see what we got. It's a big old weight. Oh, what have we got? We have target species. We have a bull hus. Well, 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 that was quick. Second fish, haven't been here long. Getting the net in, because the tide is ripping through. Oh, it's a nice bull hus as well. Come on, bub. We just want to say hello. No, that's not going in the net. He is not going in the net. As soon as he sees it, he goes chicken oriental. What a stunning looking fish. Oh, he just went for my foot. <laughs> We do not want a bitey, bitey foot. What a stunner. Target species. Rocket Ron was absolutely spot on. Spot on Ron. That's his new name. It's not, it's not Rocket Ron anymore. Look at the artillery in there. Look at the teeth on that. What a stunner. Oh, careful mate, careful, 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 careful. What an absolute stunner. Sorry for the camera angles. I said because of the sun and the way it's in. Look at that. <laughs> We've only been here 20 minutes. What a fabulous fish. Absolutely love it. Target species, target achieved. Might as well pack up and go home. <laughs> We're not going home. We want to catch some more. We want to catch bigger. Bigger and more. Let's have a look, see what we got then. Cool, yeah, yeah, absolutely stunning. So, wire trace, Matsu circle hook. It was lovely, it was a cracking hook. It was right in the corner of the mouth. It's made a right old mess of that bit of mackerel. So he did like the mackerel, thought they would. That's not the mackerel head though. So the mackerel head must be on that one. This next bait up is a mackerel and squid wrap. I'm just going to feed it up the hook, stick it out about a third of the way down, hide the end of the uh, top end of the hook, and there you can see it's even got almost like a simulated towel on the end of it. Not much because we don't want it helicoptering in the water. Um, keep my hands clean. I'm not 100% sure that the, the wing rods are actually fishing the bottom. They've only got 15 ounce weights. Um, so that's the length of the wire trace. Not particularly long. We'll clip it onto the running ledger. That was a two pound weight, which is a donkey old weight that. I don't really like fishing two pound weights. You've probably heard me say that before. It's no secret. I don't like using two pound weights, but needs must when the tide is ripping like it is at the moment. And there is still some weed here but it doesn't seem to be stopping me from fishing. Get this back over the side. I might have to do a bait check because we haven't had a bite on that rod for a while. Or check that it's at least fishing off the bottom. Um, and we are in about 92 feet of water. So not quite 100, just off the 100. But the tide is absolutely blasting through here at the moment. And that two pound weight is a big old lump. Just check that this one is actually fishing off the bottom. Which it might not have been. That's got a mackerel head on that one. So mackerel head. Squid and mackerel wrap, squid, squid, just plain squid. I'm just gonna check that these are actually sitting on the bottom. They're only fishing 15s. Um, 
then check this one. Check all round, check everything, and then I can have a sit down. <laughs> so, a strap eel and a bull hus. Absolutely blown away. Rocket Ron, right on Ron, right on Rocket Ron does it again. You put me on the mark, very much appreciate it. Thanks, cheers very much, buddy. Really appreciate it. Um, see what we can pull up next, eh? See what other creatures are out there. I'm looking across the Nub Tower. There's no one fishing it. There's no one there. It's a beautiful evening, perfect tide. You know, that it's like a switch. When the tide runs, the fish feed. When it goes slack, the doggies come out. That's standard Solent fishing. I know we're on the outskirts of the Solent now. We're not quite, oh, what we got there? Look like a shimmy on the rod then. Oh, yep, yeah, we got a bite. There's something on this one. I've only just made sure that that was back as well, haven't I? Whatever it is, I don't think it's very big. I might have dropped it actually. But that was almost instantaneous, wasn't it? That's why it's worth checking that your baits are on the bottom. I hadn't had a bite on this rod and I just bumped it back and almost within one or two minutes, there was a bite on it. Now then, what's going on there? Ah. <laughs> I'm going to show you this one. This is the smallest, oh, <laughs> the smallest trap you're going to see. <laughs> it's tiny. Absolutely tiny. He's spinning away. Spin, spin, spin. That is a tiny strap. He's not even hooked. <laughs> He's not even hooked. He just won't let go. That's crazy. Look, the hook's not even in him. Go on then. Yeah. <laughs> I might mess with that. Unclip my weight. He didn't have time to spin my trace up because I was straight onto him because I saw the bike quite quick. So he hasn't destroyed my rig. And I think I'm just going to loose hook a whole squid. It's a bait I do like. When I say loose hook, I'm just going through it once, through it twice, just so it can't be easily pulled off. Just checking, heard a clicker going. It's the benefit of having the clickers on so that if you're busy doing something, it can get your attention. It is literally just loose hooked like that so it can move around in the current, be more of an attractant. And then I'm going to bounce this one a long way back. I might even give it a head start with a little flicky cast, to be honest. Just get it going. Because I want it to go way back. Make sure it's right on the bottom. That's where the fishes are. There's no point being where the fishes ain't. drag there we go where's fishing so two straps one ball has no hard knock or screaming take but if it's a small strap if we sat there sat on the bait we don't really want a deep hook fish so let's see what we got oh there's something on that there, a bit of a jag, so it might be, might be an eel. I'm trying to remember what bait I had. Oh, I don't know. It's got a bit of weight to it. Whatever it is, it seems to have woken up now. That was the smallest of bites. That was hardly anything. It's got a bit of a weight to it, you know. 
not doing much. <laughs> I'm making on it, but it's really slow. I just hope this one hasn't picked up a bull hus on that whole squid because this is a mono. Those two have got the wire tracers on because they had the mackerel baits on which I expected to be more likely to get the uh, bull hus. I don't know what this is. This is a weird, weird fight considering there's a lot of current pull, there's a lot of tide run at the moment. problem with this is because I was fishing 15, 15 ounce weights on this one I think it is, I bounced it a long way back so I've got a lot of ground to make up on this one. That's probably why the bite was so muted, why it was so um, but yeah this is a strange, strange fight. Is it coming up? What have we got here? Oh, it's a ray. And we love the ray. Oh, he's trying to go. I better let some drag off. <laughs> I didn't get to see what kind of ray that was then, but yeah. Thought it was a bit strange. They tend to use the tide to their advantage. What have we got here? Is that a thorn back? Wait. We love the ray. Especially on this channel. Oh, he's only lightly hooked. Very lightly hooked. Cool. <laughs> that is very lightly hooked. Look at that. Hook straight out. <laughs> I was lucky with that one. Let's put that to one side. Let's have a look. That little male thornback ray. He's only a weenie one. He's a weeny thornback ray. <laughs> I love them. They got got thorns on the underside, on the white part of the flesh that's really smooth compared to the top part. They got these big thorns. That one's missing actually. You can see the scar where it was, but it's missing. And there's its gills. What an amazing creature. Let's get back. <laughs> Thornback Ray. Oh, but, oh, and he's away. He was frisky. <laughs> frisky little Thornback Ray. The camera picks up more light than what there actually is, so it makes a better picture of it. It's the benefits of using a proper camera as opposed to something like a GoPro. Um, yeah, Thornback Ray. So I'm happy. You know I'm happy. As soon as I get a ray in the boat, that's me, I'm done. Um, target species, bull hus, amazing. Two straps, you know, you have to put up with the good, bad and indifferent. That is definitely winter solent fishing with the straps. Um, so what's happening now? So I'm going to fish into darkness. I'm keeping an eye on the conditions. I've got the nab tower within sight, so I'm gauging whether there's going to be a sea mist or not tonight because of the warm daytime temperatures, but the temperature's dropping now. So I think there is going to be a bit of a mist. So I've got my sound signal ready just in case. But I'm pretty much safe here, close enough to the nab, but nowhere near the channel. Um, so head torches out in a minute. I'll rig some lighting so we can carry on filming. I'm going to fish a good couple of hours into darkness, I think. And then I'll make my way up through the Solent and then up the River Hamble, put the boat to bed tonight. And then tomorrow, my brother's coming out for a fishing session. He hasn't been out in the boat for absolutely ages. That's the work-life balance, isn't it? He's working and I'm balancing. <laughs> um, yeah, so see what's gonna happen. Um, I'm excited now because tide's starting to ease off a little bit. And with the light starting to fail, and as it gets dark, I expect things to, to liven up a bit, you know? We're in nice deep water, 90, 90 something feet of water. Um, we've got good baits, plenty of baits, and four rods with hooks on. So we're in with a chance. A chance of what? I don't know. <laughs> I'm happy already, to be honest. We're good, we're golden. 
It'd be nice to get something different though, wouldn't it? I'd like a nice big eel to the boat, to be honest. If I could get any into double figure eels, that'd be nice. Um, hard work, but you know, that'd be nice, something different. We haven't put a big eel on camera for, well, since last winter, I think. In fact, out with Wayne, we put, I think it was a 35 we put on camera. Um, so yeah, a nice eel won't go amiss now. Seems we've got the target species already. We've got the channel species, which is a ray. Um, just want these two rods to work a little bit more, you know? Um, big weights, big baits, big rigs. They're out there to see what they can pick up. And that ray was the subtlest of bites. I just thought, I thought we might have been being picked at. It was just a little rattle and then nothing. I thought I'd lift into it. Yeah, he was there. All right, back to fish. Um, yeah, <laughs> whatever that is, it's, um, it's lively. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be a nail. Definitely the way that is jagging around. <sighs> cool. I think it's going to be a decent size eel as well by the looks of it. My guess, the way that's jagging around and the way that went off, that is a nail. We might just get what we were wishing for, you know? <laughs> that's definitely jagging around a lot. I think this is going to be a decent nail. I'm going to have to check for my gloves. He's proper angry, this one. I've just unhooked a strap. I didn't bother putting it on camera purely because it was tiny. Two pound, if anything. But this one isn't two pound. And he's been a bit compliant at the moment. He's coming towards me. Almost certain this is an eel. Just the, the aggression and the way it went. gloves I know where they are they're not right next to me that's where they're not God he is angry he's putting a decent bend in this rod and like a flick of a switch they come towards you and then they back away they come towards you and they back away it's, it's almost like their tactic for how they fight Check my other rods. Move this one out of the way. Give me some working space. I'm not sure what trace I've got on this. He's straight up and down at the moment. Right, where are we? Oh yeah, he's a nice sized fish. Oh no, he's not. He's a hound. <laughs> it's not an eel at all. How's that then? A stunning smooth hound with that light in the background. He is absolutely bristling. He's not big. Six and a half, seven pound maybe. I'm rubbish at guessing, but I keep trying. I keep trying to guess because you can only practice and get better. <laughs> Look at that. He's a stunner. <laughs> Let's put him back. <laughs> yeah, bud. Where you go? He's gone. Off like a flash. Well, I didn't expect that. So we're at low water now. Low water, slack. Nothing's really happening. It's almost like a switch. It's just switched off. Oh, no tidal flow. And the fish just literally just stop. You may get the odd eel that's out on the hunt covering ground, quartering ground, I think they call it. Um, but yeah, from that initial run, all those hits, all those fish, didn't have any miss bites, picked up on everything. Picked up one eel that I didn't know I had. It was just sat there quiet. And it was there was a lot of weed on it, so I think he just had he was covered in weed and he felt safe, so he didn't run. Um, but yeah, so the plan is now, and always was really at this mark, is to see through the low 
and low and the initial um, flood for me in this area tends to fish well. Albeit I've not fished this mark at night, hence while we're here. Plus the weather's good, visibility is really good. Um, about one and a half miles to those boats that you can see in the background with the lights. It's an anchorage point for large ships. Um, they've all come in for the evening, waiting to go into up into the Solent and up into like, the dock area tomorrow. It's almost like a queue-in system. Um, love it. There's not a breath of wind. I thought there'd be a little bit of mist tonight, but there's not. I'm very thankful for that because that always makes things a little bit creepy for a small boat. Um, because every all the sounds are um, amplified, and, you, and, and it's hard with an outboard running to judge what what's what when you can't quite see into the distance. So I'm very grateful for the lack of mist tonight, and it's fishing. So both the big rods have got big weights at the moment. They don't really need to be there, but when I rebate them in a minute, I'm going to put 12s on them, and I'm going to put 12s, possibly nines, on the wing rods, um, just because they're bounced further back. So both wing rods are baited with whole squid, loosely hooked, just flowing. And both of the big rods are mackerel heads with guts. And I'm, and I'm quite keen to see what that does. I think we covered all bases. Um, the two wing rods have got mono traces, longer, more flowing. And the big rods have got short foot and a half, two foot wire traces. Hence, with the ball huss earlier on. Just had a bit of a, a bit of a go on this rod. And I get the distinct feeling he might have just robbed the squid. Oh no, he's there. <laughs> Whatever was there is still there. <laughs> That might be another hound going by the way that that is going. I think this might be hound number two. Yeah, he's going well, but it's almost like you can feel the line down the side of it. Oh, have I, have I just lost it? Oh no, he's still coming. Cool, he was coming towards me pretty quick then. What have we got? Let's have a look. Oh no, it's an eel. It is an eel. Not a particularly big one. A fairly mediocre Solent average eel, to be honest. I'm not going to bring this one into the boat. So earlier on, I thought the hound I thought was an eel, and this eel I thought was a hound. <laughs> I might get it right one day. Let's have a look at you. Yeah, he's not big. He is only about five or six pound. He went well though. Gave a good account of himself. Frisky. Oh, calm down. Oh, yeah, no. He took the hook and everything there. <laughs> Twisted the hook clean off. Half expected, but a little bit disappointing. The boat slewed round, tripped the anchor, and I'm now I'm dragging the anchor and the uh, the rods are starting to look like a complete mess. So I'm going to work to get these in. I'm going to pack up. I'm not going to re-anchor because in the dark and in this location, I'm not happy doing it. Oh, there's the fish. There's a the sounder. So I'm going to use that as a natural break. I'm more than happy with how it's fished. Um, I would have liked to do a couple more hours, but in all honesty, with the way things are panned out and, and what's happening now, I'm happy to, to have the anchor in, have a clean and a tidy up and square myself away. Start the, uh, I've got about an hour to cruise back and about 20 minutes up the river. So I've got a good hour and a half, a bit of a clean down, load the van up, the new van, the new fishing wagon. <laughs> Exciting stuff, isn't it? It's all good stuff. Uh, new fishing wagon and um, yeah. So all in all, an unusual session. Target species and some really randoms for the area. I've um, thoroughly enjoyed myself as always. I've enjoyed your company. As always, tight lines and happy fishing. I hope to see you sometime soon. From me, from here, for now, it's goodbye. Take care and I'll see you soon.
Bye for now. <laughs> I've got to reel these rods in. <laughs> and sort them out. They're going to be all tangled. <laughs> that was a bite then. <laughs> there was nothing on that. Nothing went. And I thought I'd snagged the bottom. But then it actually, I, I felt the fish. Whatever it was, it's let go. Or it's bit me through. Yeah, look. <laughs> that took that whole squid. <laughs> that must have just had hold, had hold of the squid. I didn't even see a bite. Piece. I was packing away and I did do the last piece of the camera, but I've put it back on again because I've got this absolute donkey, donkey of a bull hus. I'll show you to the camera and then we'll put your, and then we'll get that look out of you, mate. Don't you nab me. <laughs> Look at that for a bull hus. <laughs> He's an absolute monster. Look at the size of that. He's a chunk. I'm going to have to weigh him. I'm going to have to weigh him because I think he's my PB. <laughs> Look at the size of that. <laughs> Let's get the hook out of here. He's so dark, this one. He's a dark critter. So I've got the rods back in their racks. Um, yeah, I can't remember what my PB was. Was it 11.3, 11, 11.4, 11, 11.5? <laughs> so they must all be about the same. Um, 11.5 with a bit of bounce. So my previous PB was 11.3, 11, 11.4. 11, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to split hairs um, for the sake of an ounce or so. <laughs> I know it means a lot to some people. I was just chuffed. It's a two ball hus. I'd packed everything away, I'd packed the camera away, I'd been slacklined, didn't realise he was there, started a reeling, and then he went some. <laughs> they usually come up like a dead weight, but he was swimming off. And even in my head torch in the water, he looked amazing. I just can't catch that on camera, you know? It's really hard to catch that stuff on camera. Um, <laughs> I'm checking around. I know I'm still dragging my anchor. I've got to bring my anchor in. Um, and I'm heading for home. So I am going now, because the rods are all packed away. <laughs> the boat is an absolute mess. He spewed up bits of mackerel and God knows what else. There's stuff everywhere. I need to tidy myself up, but I need to head for home. So I am going now. I'm not going to repeat everything again. I'm going home. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.